We're gonna be building this Look 765 Optimum today. Not mine, belongs to another customer, but with the new SRAM Force group sets. All these parts have been sort of drip feeding in recently, and this is our first chance to get a look at the entire group set in detail. But I really wanna celebrate the sheer versatility of this group set. I've never known a point where we could have a sort of a custom fit consultation with a customer and be able to choose so many options um, it was mind boggling. I would say I want to sort of celebrate what I think is now the most versatile group set I have ever known. Just to try and get it started, I'm going to go for the component that probably has the least amount of options for you. So these are the, the shifters. And the reason why I like these over the rivals is because they give you a few options for this custom build. One, you get the contact point adjust and you get the reach adjust. Now that means that we can adjust where this lever activates. So if you've got smaller hands, you can bring that lever right in close to the bars, but then you can actually adjust the point at which the pads contact the disc. So you can sharpen up that sort of bite point, if you like. In fact, the only thing these shifters really lack is the ability to add in little the uh, SRAM blips and clicks like this. The SRAM red levers actually have two little ports here where you can clip these in. So you might remember the BMC video where we showed you if you wanted to add aero extensions and then clip those in. You can use the wireless ones, but then you have like another set of batteries sort of to manage where these will normally sort of slide underneath bar tape. So it's a bit of a shame that it haven't got at least one port there to, to plug those in with. But other than that, what a great unit. They even come with a variety of different bolts. So unlike the Shimano ones, you actually have to find out which bolts you need and then buy them separately. When you buy these from SRAM, you get a whole collection of different bolt lengths. So it's gonna suit your frame right out of the box. Of course, with the SRAM system, you're gonna get a left and right lever, both with a paddle shift. So if you're just using one bar, you just have left hand makes it easier, right hand makes it harder, and then you press both together to change the front mech. So if you decide to either add in or take away a front mech at a later date, you don't have that problem of trying to add things back in. So I think that's a, a great feature as well. You can also have satellite shifters that will control things like dropper posts if you're into gravel riding and all that sort of stuff as well. So the rear mech, you actually have quite a few options. And I have to say, I just want to admire this sort of new branding. They've been really, really clever, I think, because this, the old SRAM Force was kind of a gray color, didn't really suit every type of frame. What they've done now is use a sort of metallic black and black gloss and just added a little bit of a nice finishing touch with this sort of uh, hologram effect branding, which I think will suit uh, almost any frame that you put it onto. Again, the options that you have here are a kind of insane. So you have the smaller mech, there's a bigger one if you're gonna run a one by system. And then you've even got the choice of, sort of pulling from the mountain bike range because you can still connect to SRAM GX mech to all those levers and get an incredible gear ratio range if you want to. Of course, all the batteries are compatible and when you buy SRAM stuff, you actually get all the little fitting tools in them. So you don't always get this with Shimano. Okay, it's extra plastic, it's extra landfill. Shouldn't need to use it, you should be able to measure. But if you are a home mechanic installing this for at home, uh, you know, you get quite a lot of the sort of setup tools to really help you fit this at home. Now, before I go too much further, I just want to talk about the amount of help you get from the SRAM website. So this is the SRAM Access compatibility chart and it maps out everything that's going to be compatible with everything else and it's really really easy to understand you start with your primary component in which case is the SRAM derailleur once you've chosen that depending on what cassette that you want you can then decide whether you need a one by setup or a two by setup and then it will say what type of crank set do you need that's going to be compatible with that and you can start going through this compatibility chart, making sure that everything is gonna work. And like I say, the options here are pretty endless, but I'm gonna put up the crank set next because that is where I've never seen a group set with just so much choice. So the crank sets we've gone for for this particular build are quite unique. First of all, we wanted 165 millimeter cranks, which that we can get down that small readily available and with a power meter options i say options not just option there are several ways that you can build a power meter into this system it was pretty cool so what we have gone for is 
a two by setup in this case. After talking to our customer, the two by setup is gonna work far better for them than a one by setup. And we have gone for the 4633. And so this is the non power meter version. So with this, the inner ring and the outer ring are all one piece, but we can upgrade this to a full power meter at any time because of this eight bolt system here, we can just take this off and bolt in a power meter version. You might remember from the BMC video where we did this with the SRAM red crank set and we actually swapped this out and we had that debate about if you're gonna change your chain rings, you also need to change your power meter. Well, SRAM have kind of thought about that and said, well, okay, if you're racing and you want the stiffest and the lightest, then bolting your power meter to your chain rings is the best way of achieving that and it's gonna be expensive. However, if you're a heavy user and you want to replace your chain rings more often, you have several options actually. One, what you can do is take this entire thing off or even just buy the crank separately and use a quark power meter and then use a standard 104, 106, whatever it is, BCD chain rings. You can even use Shimano chain rings if you want to as well. Um, and then you've kind of done away with that whole argument because you've just bolted the quark power meter into the standard eight bolt configuration. Or you can even do what we've done in this case is just choose a, a left hand power meter. In this case, you're only buying the left hand crank. So I've got to say, I think this is my preferred setup for cost to benefit ratio, if you like. Of course, you've got the ultimate stiffness, weight, high cost. You've got the ultimate in sort of flexibility, compatibility by buying the separate quark power meter using whatever chain rings you want. And you've got this. I think this still allows us this beautiful, lightweight, one piece sort of inner and outer chain ring, but the versatility of having a, just a left hand power meter. I have to say, even though the stages left hand power meter has been pretty poor, things like the four IIIO um, and the quark have never really given me any cause for concern about just using left hand. So yeah, with the SRAM Force group set, you can go from 165 millimeters, these are the shortest ones they do, right up to 177.5 millimeters in two and a half millimeter increments. That is a crazy amount of configurations. And also you've got lots of different gear ratios as well. This is the sort of the middle one. This is the 4633. They do one up from this and one up again. They actually do one smaller as well. So essentially you've got four different gear ratio options just on this. However, when you go to the smaller, I think it's a 3044, you have to use a different axle width. So you'll see on here, it says dub. That will mean that you have to go to dub wide, which also means that you have to put in some bottom bracket spacers and you have to use a special front mech as well, which we'll talk about next. So this is the front mech. They do two versions of the front mech. And weirdly, they're taken off this sort of hologram branding. This is all just like, uh, an ABS plastic and you can't see that sort of hologram effect on the force branding. Um, again, if you're a home mechanic and still on this, all you've got to do is follow the instructions, all the little guides and things that are there. We've even got QR codes. If you just take a picture of that with your phone, it'll bring up all the instructions you need to get this set up absolutely perfectly. Um, all the guidelines are written on the, here on the cage. It's, it's so easy to set up, it's insane. Um, so they do two versions. This is the standard one. If you are going to be using that extra wide crank set, there's a wide version as well. Now, the reason you might need to spec the wide one, one is if you want that super low ratio gears on the road, but more than likely it's because you're running the gravel bike and you need the extra tire clearance. If you're running particularly fat 45, 50 or even 55 millimeter wide tires, you're going to need to bring everything a little bit further away from the seat tube. So that's what that wide mech is for, just to the inside of this cage here isn't gonna be fouling against the tire as that tire gets fatter and fatter. The fact that option exists, uh, I think is pretty, pretty cool. Ooh. And then of course, all the little bits and pieces we need to go with them. Um, <laughs> we actually ordered the right size bolts for this frame, but we don't need them because it came in the packet. So there we go. Um, we also got two batteries. Again, same batteries across all the SRAM stuff. SRAM flat top chain, the brake disc rotors as well. We've gone for 160 millimeter rotors. These are the floating ones. And this is the cassette. This is 
10 through to 36, which is going to work fine with that rear derailleur. Um, again, if you go up to the red range, you lose a bit of weight here, but you lose some versatility in your gear ratios. And this actually isn't heavy at all. So we're going to go 1036 coupled with the front chain rings, which are a 4633, which gives us a beautiful low gear ratio, but also we don't sacrifice that much on the upper end as well. So we're still keeping our maximum speed, but we're gaining on our lower end as well. So this should be fantastic for the hills of North Wales and beyond. Plan for the building. Now our customers had a rudimentary bike fit with us. We know the frame size is right. What I don't want to do is cut the steerer until the customer's been here and sat on it and we're absolutely 100% happy. So we're gonna start running cables, getting all those cables lashed down on the inside get all the gears in place so that our customer can sit on it in a turbo trainer. We'll do the absolute final fit, make their 101% sure of it. Then what we'll do, we'll send our customer away to go and get a coffee and some lunch. We'll cut the steerer, bleed up the brakes, and they'll come back and everything will be absolutely perfect. So right now, when you start getting all of this bolted together. This beautiful bike is getting an equally as beautiful Hambini bottom bracket. So this uses the T47 internal. So that's 85.5 millimeter shell width and the bearings actually sit internal of the frame in here still and we can actually use a standard 6806 bearing which you can see pushed in there now this is a fantastic method because uh, Hambini actually machines up any number of different types of top hats that slot inside here depending on the cranks that you are using so in this case we're using SRAM dub the bike that I run, Hambini made up some GXP spaces for me as well. Thank you very much for that. It meant that I could keep using my quark power meter, but you can also run BB30 or 30 millimeter axles or even Shimano 24 millimeter axles. So great system, I really like this. Super easy to install. This is aluminium, it gets aluminium, just some standard grease will be fine, 30 Newton meters. And we even invested in a Hambini tool, which is significantly better than those park ones that I keep bitching about. Um, these are fantastic. These are really, really well machined, as you'd expect. Does use a 32 millimeter socket, so we've had to buy a 32 millimeter socket. Kind of stacks up our torque wrenches, but it's a good way of getting this done. 30 newton meters is specified torque. Let's get this thing fitted. So I should just mention actually that if you are installing your own Hambini bottom bracket, please make sure you go to his website and check out the installation instructions because unlike you know, more mass produced bottom brackets. He doesn't put any sort of laser etching as to the direction you should be rotating and the torque setting. So just be careful not to cross threading because there's no markings on these and the website's not entirely clear as to which is the drive side and which is the non-drive side. If in doubt, don't force anything, go to the instructions, have a look. But normally the one with the tube is the drive side and you always tighten bottom brackets towards the back of the bike because as the crank is spinning forwards, and the bearings on the inside are rotating backwards, this should naturally tighten it on it itself so it shouldn't come undone when you're riding. That's the theory. So we just make sure that this goes in, drive side, and if the threads are clean, this should go in with almost just hand pressure. It's also worth mentioning as well, don't just tighten up one side completely, just bring them both in at the same time so that tube actually intersects on the inside rather than tightening one up completely and then you might get a little clash. So by going in a little bit of time, making sure that tube actually inserts is the way to do it. Again, just using hand pressure here until I'm happy that everything is lined up. The tool I'm using here, this is the Weira X3, the 20 to 100 meter torque wrench, set this to 30 Newton meters. The reason I like it is because most of these heavy torque wrenches just go in one direction or at least accurate to one direction. And this means that we can actually flip the head around like this, so we can actually use things with like reverse threads. This is super useful for bottom brackets where we have to do like left hand threads. Perfect. The unexpected problem, we have a bit of a, a play issue here. Uh, the, preload bolt, the preload bolt won't take all of this play out, so what we need to do is a <clears throat> quick measure of the chain line. We are going to need, by the looks of it, a couple of two and a half millimeter spacers 
I'll be right back. Cool, so the reason we're fitting this spacer is to achieve the, the chain line that we need on this side and that spacer will be more than enough. In fact, Tambini, if you're watching, it would be really, really great if you could include some dub size spacers just so we can fine tune the chain line without putting so much strain on the preload bolt on the other side. That'd be really cool. Let's find our 54 newton meters again. Bring our preload bolt in. Ah, oh, yeah. Now, the preload bolts on SRAM stuff are really, really fragile, so do not over tighten them. It's just to nip them up. <laughs> there we go. That is one beautiful bottom bracket. Look at that. Super nice, really impressed with that. Time to get some wheels sorted and surprise, surprise, we are going for the fast forwards. These are the Riot 44s. Now, you just can't argue with these wheels. I think they just tick all the boxes for me. DT Swiss 240 hubs, brass nipples, fantastic quality spokes. The rim quality is fantastic. They fit it up with tubeless tape. It comes with a really good quality tubeless valve, really good warranty, really good crash replacement. Like. I really, really find it hard to argue with them. We can't even as wheel builders deliver something better than this. Like the build quality is so good. And then they've got the additional of the extra warranty and the crash replacement. Just, it's just like tick, 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 tick for me. Right, I'm gonna go and get some tires and stuff on downstairs where we've got the compressor and all the big tools. So I'll see you up here in a second. That's it. That is as far as we go for now. The customer is on their way up to see us. They are bringing their own saddle, they are bringing their own pedals. We're gonna do a bike fit, send them away, go and enjoy a nice dinner while we sort all their brakes out and all the little final adjustments. And the next time you see this, it will be just before we hand this bike over to its new owner. Mm -hmm. 